Hello and welcome to this new video. Today we'll be talking about the C-Depth map and we will be rendering it in Blender and importing it into After Effects. So I've already made a quick scene using the Subaru model I made. You can get this for free by the way using the Blender Kit add-on. It's available for the free version of the add-on. We won't only be talking about importing it in After Effects, we will be also addressing some issues that arise with using the C-Depth map in After Effects. So we can go to the view layer here and just check Z. And this will enable the C-Depth map. So if we go into the compositing, we will see that we already have a depth map here. You will see I already set up a basic denoiser. I always do this um, just so we, you know, don't have a noisy image. You can easily add this denoiser by just checking denoising data and then pressing Shift A and just adding a denoise node and then just connecting the sockets. All right, so I rendered this and we basically save it as a multi-layer EXR. All right, now we are in After Effects and we just do a simple import of the render we made. I already have a scene set up that, you know, has all the issues fixed. But first I'll just show you the quick walkthrough of the depth map. So we just create a new comp and then we duplicate this. And as usual, we just get the extractor plugin. We give those to both and here we check the depth map now and this is wide and this is okay we'll fix this in a bit and here we uh and here we just select the combined and then we get the open color io plugin if you haven't downloaded this yet and if you don't know where to find it the link will be in the description and then all we do is we go into program files blender foundation blender version version number again, data files, color management, and just choose the config OCIO. And then here, keep the input color space to linear because we're using XR, which is which works with the linear color space. And then the output space depends. Um, I think I think AGX is the new standard. I think if you render with 4.0 or 4.1, you use AGX as standard. If you're still using Filmic, obviously go with Filmic sRGB. And if you're using an sRGB screen, you use obviously a GX based sRGB. If you are using some Rec 709 screen, yeah, obviously use another color space. I have an sRGB screen, so I'm gonna use this one. So this is set up correctly, and now we're gonna go back to the depth map. So obviously we can't see anything yet. If you have no idea what the depth map does, it's basically a black and white image that tells you the depth of your scene, of the render you made. So if I go and change the white point, you can see we can actually go through sort of the depth of the image. And we can use the black and white points to sort of control where our focus is. But you will quickly find that using this is absolutely horrible. It's, you know, the, the, the mapping is completely off. We can't use these sliders, they're completely useless. So we'll just go over here and get an exposure plugin. And this sort of remaps it. And we have now one slider that we can use to, you know, properly set the focus. It's a lot better to use. And I mean, this looks right. This looks like it's working, but you'll see in a bit that we will have some issues. So let's turn this off for now. Let's make an adjustment layer. Put this under the depth map. And let's get a camera lens blur. This is just a standard camera lens blur. You, everybody should have this. And then we choose the super underscore two. We can actually go ahead and rename this. And it still isn't working. This is because we have set this to source. We need to set it to effects and masks. The reason being is because we using, we're using the extractor and the exposure. So it's sort of looking at the effects too. It's going from top to bottom. And the last effect is sort of the, you know, the input it's using for the depth map. So this looks like it's, you know, it's working, but we haven't set a background yet. So let's make a solid. Let's just add a gradient ramp. And you will quickly notice that we are having some issues. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna set, make a, a more complex background, not just like a solid color, but a gradient and with some weird colors. Stuff that reveals, you know, our edge problems that we have. All right, so this is looking okay. Like it's it's sort of working, but you see we have some issues. The focus is sort of set here. It's sort of this region here, but we're still 
getting some weird blurring here and we're also getting weird blurring here and here as well this is sharp but it still has some blurs so it's not a massive deal if you know like if you are fine with this and you're like yeah i don't care i just want you know a, a simple lens blur and i don't care about these edges that's fine but for me it's not okay and i want to fix it and it's annoying because any other compositing tool doesn't have this issue because you can easily you know, fix the edges of the CDF map. But After Effects doesn't really have any dedicated tool, at least a standard tool. I'm sure there's like paid, you know, plugins and stuff that fix your depth map. But, you know, we don't always want to spend a ton of money on, you know, plugins that fix a single issue. I'm kind of against that. So sort of the logical way of thinking would be to have the CDF map and have an alpha applied to it. That way we get the edges, you know, of our object and that way we can soften the edges because as soon as we have like an alpha mat, we can use tons of plugins that, you know, grab the edges and soften them, they extend them, they crop them. We can do a lot of things. All right. So let's hop into the other scene. Let's go in here and I've already set up the blur and everything. So we can see here, we have a very extreme depth of field, but the edges don't have these issues. We do not have any weird blurs where they shouldn't so these edges are super clean and fade nicely into the depth of field now i haven't tested this solution on like all types of scenes i think this scene is a good benchmark we have lots of depth of field and we have some very sharp edges that transition into the blur and we have like this sticking out here as well so i think this is a decent solution and i'll now show you what i sort of did so let's open up the depth map and let's disable all the effects. So what I did first is I started with the extractor, obviously. So I got my C depth map and this is how it looked in the beginning. So the first thing we need to be able to edit the edges is an alpha texture. So I use the view layer noisy image a, which is the alpha basically from our noisy image. You can also do a separate alpha pass. I'm just using the one from the noise image because it works fine. So if we turn on the background here, we can see we are having like some real issues here with the edges. This is probably due to the noisy image, um, but I'm just using the alpha here because all the other alphas don't work here. I'm not sure why the combined alpha doesn't work. It probably has got something to do with the denoising process and how it's stored. You could set up a separate alpha pass and it should work. But yeah, I'm just going to use the view layer noisy image alpha. So the first thing I added was the exposure plugin because we always need this. Otherwise we can't probably change the depth of the image. Then I added the refine hard mat. This sort of got rid of all these, you know, edge problems here and it sort of cropped it down a bit and it smoothed it down a bit. You can copy these values. You just kind of have to mess around with it, honestly. Then what I did next is I added a mat choker. A mat choker, it does what it says. It chokes mats, so you can sort of extend and you can choke mats. And what's really nice is that it has a really nice softening. So this was really important for just softening the basic edges here. And then I just used a basic fastbox blur, actually two. So I have this one and then a second one. And honestly, I recommend using as many as you need. I think it really depends on the scene and how much depth of field you want. You can really tweak those just to, you know, fit your depth of field. So obviously with more camera lens blur, we can use a lot of more fastbox blur because obviously the camera lens blur is going to make like huge bokehs. So it's fine to use more fastbox blur. Obviously, if you have less camera lens blur, you don't need as much fastbox blur. You could also use a Gaussian blur. I really like using fastbox blur for stuff like this because it's a lot faster. And we all know how slow After Effects is and we really want to keep this optimized. So I recommend using this one. So as I said, this is definitely not an all cure. You really have to tweak it. And honestly, I'd recommend using the CDAP5 in Blender. If you're already using Blender, honestly, just use the compositor. But if you have to use After Effects, this is one solution I can offer and you know, don't go and copy these settings and expect it to work well. You have to really mess around. Honestly, this isn't like a, like a five minute solution. You really have to make this work with your scene. And 
otherwise yeah it's not gonna be gonna be looking good you know but but we actually you know it, for this scene it, it works well enough i'd say you know we are getting the proper sort of blurring almost i think this should be more blurred here but this is due to the mad choking and the blurring and you know you need to sort of adapt it so i think this might actually be a bit closer to the camera to the camera so it's might not be that wrong but yeah it, i i feel like this works well enough and obviously i'm not going to use such a strong camera blur so if we turn this down it's going to look a lot better anyways so this was the strong blur was just to sort of demonstrate it better but realistically we're not going to use like much more blur than this and i think with this it works really well and now we can go and animate this or you know for a still runner just change it up make it more like this you know this works i think fine and we have some proper edges here as well however you know for compositing with multi-layer exr i do not recommend after effects that much i know it's a great you know tool but the way i kind of do it i either use just blender or i go into natron which is a free alternative to you know compositing it's sort of a nuke clone well so it's not a it's natron is not like a nuke clone it's been discontinued for a while and you know it doesn't have that much tools but i think but in my opinion natron handles multi-layer exr playback really well it renders a lot quicker than after effects and what i like to do is i get my open exr i do all the things i need to do before you know rendering the exr the passes and then I export the passes as like a TIFF sequence and I use those in After Effects. That way, you know, After Effects doesn't have to calculate the extractor all the time. It's a lot quicker. And, you know, you can do that your stuff in Natron and then do your workflow in After Effects and then render it as a final video. So I definitely recommend that workflow, to be honest. I absolutely, I do not like working with XR and After Effects. I think it's very slow. I think it's kind of outdated. But yeah, if, if you really have to do this in After Effects, this could fix your issue with the setup map. I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.